Hello, welcome to the test video of my DSPIC 33FJ 16GS504 Low Frequency Inverter System or Transformer Pace Inverter System. Now, this is the transformer, this is the control board. I have my multimeter here, I have my inverter display screen here, I have my um, oscilloscope here. Now, let me turn the system on. All right, so I've set it to display 220 volts. I want 220 volts. And it's giving me 221.5. All right, so plus or minus one, it's okay. All right, so that's how the system turns on. It has a soft start. That's how come you saw the, uh, the sine wave increasing gradually. Let's check that again. Check the sine wave. You see that it will be rising gradually. Yeah. Okay, so soft starts. It has soft starts. It means it can be used for inductive loads without any issue. All right. Now let's try great charging. At this point, I want you to check how the inverter synchronizes itself with the grid inputs. After non grid, grid is blue, inverter is yellow. Synchronization done. Load is transferred. Now it will start charging. Let's see that again. Grid is blue, inverter is yellow. All right, transfer to load. It will start charging. So the charging current will rise up to the maximum current defined or set from settings. Okay, so now it's charging. Let's test load. That's 1,130 watts. And the curve is still okay. The output is also stable. Charging current can be adjusted from settings. As well as the inverter output voltage, it can also be adjusted from settings. To assess settings, you press the set button, you hold it. You have the option of selecting the inverter output at this point. If you go up, you can calibrate your battery voltage. AC input 240, 241. You can select it or you can set it if there is difference. Battery full voltage. There is a 24 volt inverter. So when each battery gets to 14.2, the battery should be considered as full. And this is ideal for gel batteries. If you have different batteries, you can adjust the parameters over here. Float charge 27.6. Grid to battery. The system has a function called solar priority function. Even though it doesn't have charge controller embedded, if you have an external solar charge controller, the inverter can take decisions whether to run from battery or to run from grid based on the battery voltage. Low battery off. This is used to turn off the inverter when the battery goes low. You set it yourself based on what you want. Great recharge, yes. So concerning the solar priority, uh, if you set a solar priority to on, then you have an option of setting at what point you want grid to recharge your battery. Select charge amps. I've set it to 20 amps. So if you want any other charging current, you can select whatever current that you want. But the minimum charging current is 10 amps for this system. Yes, solar parity or PV parity. 
if you can set it to either yes or no on and off so based on what you want you set i don't want it battery to grid at this point you set the battery level that the system should transfer your load to grid that's if you are running solar priority it only works when solar priority is on if solar priority is not on this function doesn't work grid charge enable grid charge enable on you can use these settings to enable or disable grid charging if you want grid to charge your battery you put it on if you don't want grid to charge your battery just give you bypass you just put it off okay save and exit so whatever you've set you finally press set and it will save in memory it will restart and then everything will work fine okay synchronization transferred all right so basically this is how the system runs it has a lot of protections overload protection fan failure detection temperature sensor failure detection if there is no output if maybe a connection doesn't go right or there is a short circuit it has short circuit protection too so let me try some of the protections and let's see let me take off the temperature sensor if the temperature sensor is not connected the system will return an error it will create whatever action that it's or whatever task that is performing and return to the fault mode so i'm taking off the temperature sensor twice as charger okay So you see the grid is the grid is what is showing on the screen. The inverter itself is gone off. So this a hard fault. Hard fault simply means um, kind of fault or errors that will cause the output of the inverter to be cut or disconnected, and the system or the software will go to fault mode. There are some faults that will not cut the output, or there are some errors that will not cut the output. Those one I describe them as soft errors. All right, so let's let's disconnect the fan and see what happens. So since it's not a hard force, the output is still there. All functions works. It will charge. It will do everything. You can power your load everything. But if the system goes on high temperature, one the fan has already filled. If the system goes on high temperature, that one it will shut down. Now, fan error simply means that either the fan is open or the fan is not connected, or the transistor controlling the fan has failed or is shorted. These are the two conditions that will, will trigger fan error. Now, when you connect the fan back, The B pin will stop. Okay. So let me try and disconnect one cable from the transformer and see what happens. So I'll turn it off and take off the transformer live. I've taken the transformer live. Let's turn on the system. Output error. So that's what happens when the transformer is not connected, or when the output is shorted. When you shut the output, it will not see any feedback from the transformer. So you get this same error. Output error. All right. So output error will be triggered if transformer is not connected, or the short circuit at the output. All right. I've connected it, I have to restart it to get, since it's a hard error, I have to restart it.